It was, you know, learning these statistics that caregivers die at a rate that is higher than people their own age who aren't caregiving. I wouldn't allow this disease to take our whole family out, especially not me. When we were really learning about brain health, we learned that one in five women are at risk for getting Alzheimer's. But, you know, further than that, one in three women are at risk for some sort of like neurodegenerative issue. When I opened up your book and I started reading it, I was shocked at how complicated it was to even diagnose dementia. So can we start off and just explain what dementia is? I know there's a bazillion different types, but what exactly is it and, and what are some of the early signs of it I think would be the most helpful to start with? Yeah, so dementia is kind of like this one big term, right? And underneath mm -hmm. dementia sits all different types of of diff all different types of diagnoses of dementia, which could right. be Alzheimer's, FTD, Lewy body, you know, what I've learned in the process of, um, you know, going through my husband's FTD and learning more about dementia is that there are 120 different forms, which is crazy. So, crazy. you know, it can be the loss of ability, you know, to function in everyday life, mm -hmm. to um, be able to organize our, our, our thoughts, um, you know, how we are just moving in, in, in the world. Mm -hmm. um, there is there is all these different, there there is just, you know, dementia isn't just about being forgetful. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes in all different shapes and sizes, which is so mm -hmm. important to be talking about dementia, raising awareness about it, not talking about it in hushed tones anymore because that's not helpful. We want people to get diagnosed earlier so that they can get the support that they need for yeah. their loved one and for themselves as they become a caregiver. Yeah. So dementia and Alzheimer's gets thrown around like they're the same term. It's and not. especially for women. Yeah. Can you explain the difference? Because it's almost like the fear I see in women is, well, I don't know if I don't want to get dementia or Alzheimer's. Do I have it? Like there's it's so such a mystery, the label of the term. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when we were really learning about brain health, we learned that one in five women are at risk for getting Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's is really associated with like losing your memory and that type of thing. But, you know, further than that, one in three women are at risk for some sort of like neurodegenerative issue. That's so I crazy. think that, and that kind of like pushes into that dementia thing, which can affect your body, your ability to move, you know, your mood and just your overall mm -hmm. demeanor. And so like Emma was saying, there's so many different types and and when we started learning about this, we felt it's so important to really start talking to women about their brain health because it's um, when you go look at kind of like the brain health aisle, everything is very directed towards men. And when we started having this conversation, we felt very, very um, strongly that we should start really educating and just having a real easy conversation with women about dementia and Alzheimer's. Because our brain also does so much more than just hold memory, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the confusion starts. Because Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. Again, like I said, there's 120 other different types. Crazy. And our brain does more than hold memory. It, you know, keeps us functioning in the world and showing up and, you know, being able to move and, and all the things. So, um, where it's the most common, it's just still... Um, still important to to talk about women and, and their brain and how we can support support. So women. is Alzheimer's then would be one of the 120 versions of dementia? That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you've got dementia, and then under that umbrella sits all the different forms of dementia. And when you put these 120 together, are women more susceptible than men? to dementia? Yeah. yeah, one out of every five women um, are at risk for Alzheimer's, and that's compared to one out of every 10 men. So women are at twice at risk for Alzheimer's. Um, I don't know the stat for neurogenerative decline, but I know that mm -hmm. the Alzheimer's stat is one in five compared to one in 10, which we found super staggering when we learned that statistic. Yeah. And no one's really talking about it. No. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, when you think about one in eight women will get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we 
do so much for breast can- cancer awareness, which is mm-hmm. so important. Yeah. Um, you know, I have family members that were affected, you know, by breast cancer too. And early diagnosis is so important, but it's also important to talk to women about their brains if right. we are at a higher risk. You know, one yeah. in five is is staggering. So what is it about the female brain that makes it more susceptible to dementia? I think it's so much having to do with hormones. You know, I mean, we have so many times in our lives when, you know, starting at puberty where, you know, our hormones are fluctuating. And then again, it when we have children, then again, when we're going through perimenopause and menopause yeah. and estrogen and that estrogen decline is such a tricky time in women's life where, you know, estrogen is very tied into a woman's brain health. And I think that, you know, everyone... There's a misconception that it's an older woman, you know, yeah. disease when this is really, we really need to start thinking about it as early as possible, but especially in midlife. What's what's the average onset age? Well, I mean, what was interesting to us was that we learned that you start losing your short-term memory by the age of 35. Yeah. <laughs> is that right, Helen? Yeah, that wow. is right. Yeah. And um, right now, and like... Um, you actually start having degeneration kind of 20 years before the actual Alzheimer's or issue comes up. And so the damage is happening, like for me right now, I'm 55, the damage is happening right now and it might show Mm -hmm. itself. Well, hopefully not because we're doing so much preventative stuff, but Mm -hmm. you know, it'll show up 20 years later. Yeah. And, and is estrogen, the decline of estrogen, the catalyst, or is there a bigger picture here? Well, I mean, I think there's many, there's many things that mm-hmm. contribute. Um, there's environmental factors, you know, the toxic burden that we're all under, mm-hmm. our nutrition, and, and, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to do to be taking good care of our brains. And so I think that estrogen plays just one role in it. I mean, Dr. Mindy, with your research that you're doing with your new book that's coming out, I mean, what are you what are you seeing that might be new or or different? Yeah, I would love to share that. I um, I I had a really revolutionary interview with Lisa Moscone a couple Mm -hmm. of years ago when she put the menopause brain out. And one of the things we talked about is how the female brain, as it moves through menopause, becomes less sensitive to glucose so and becomes more sensitive to ketones. So from that vantage point, I started to look at different fuel sources. And, you know, estrogen keeps us insulin sensitive. And when estrogen goes down, we don't just get get menopausal belly weight. Our brain literally doesn't know how to use glucose as well. And so Lisa and I discussed, I said, well, we have this whole other fuel source. It's called a ketone. You don't have to go on a ketogenic diet. You could just put an intermittent fast every single morning. Again, curious what you think of this. And get yourself a little dose of ketones. And ketones are neuroprotective. So they can protect you from those toxins. And they're a better fuel source for the mitochondria in the in the neurons of the brain. So in my community, I've seen women who are 48 that have tremendous brain fog, that have poor memory, and we just teach them how to get off the ultra-processed foods so they're not spiking these high glucose levels, and to just tack on a 13 to 15 hour fast every day, and so they're getting a dose of ketones. And I am not joking within like three days, four days, you see a woman's brain come back online. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. So, so like, I feel like that's, that needs to be part of the conversation because it's, it's an inability of the brain to use the fuel source. It's used for years and years and years. It's like you became a hybrid car and now you got to learn how to tap into the electrical system. Well, the thing is, is like our doctors aren't speaking to us about this. Yeah. You are. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're educating yeah. us. And I mean, yeah. this was this was one of the issues that I had in when I was in my 40s going into my doctor saying I am experiencing brain fog. I don't know what is going on. Like I am yeah. not firing in all cylinders. And I was dismissed over and over yeah. again saying, yeah. you know, you're stressed. You're not getting enough sleep. 
don't worry, it's mommy brain, you yeah. know, and, and I left that office just thinking, uh, okay, and then realizing that no, like this does not feel right. And I sought right. after uh, a brain health doctor to, you know, walk me through and make me understand what brain health is and what that yeah. looks like. I had never heard of it before. And I'm yeah. pretty up to speed on on right. wellness, I thought, but brain health was a new term for me. And you know, he introduced me to the pillars of brain health mm. and also put me on, you know, a handful of vitamins that I was taking multiple times a day, and I remember mm. turning to Helen saying, you know, I am seeing a difference. The fog is lifting. Oh, wow. I'm feeling great, but I cannot sustain taking all of these vitamins yeah. multiple times a day. So what yeah. I had said to her was like, can we do something where we can just like combine all this stuff and put it into a drink or a gummy yeah. or something that is easy? And that's how we launched Make Time Wellness, actually. Yeah. And Helen yeah. was like, yeah, let's, let's let's do it. Let's go. I mean, there's so many people like taking superfoods and, you know, there's all yeah. these different things that she could do, but no one was really like thinking about women and putting this all in one kind of comprehensive solution. And, you know, I mean, it was during COVID and Emma was like taking all these supplements. I'm like, what are you taking? And it's just not sustainable for women to continue to take that many pills. I mean, you have to be a certain, you know, uh, certain type of person to be able to sustain that. And so we created Make Time Wellness and we really went out and we kind of identified what women was take, what Emma was taking and mm. put it all into a drink that kind of checks all the boxes for women. And so we have um, Cognizant, which is citicoline in it that it's been clinically studied on women to really yeah. support focus, attention, brain health overall, a multivitamin. Just by taking a multivitamin every day, women can like starve off. It's very great for our brains. Mm -hmm. MCT oil, curcumin, which we really can't talk about it, but we all know what it's traditionally used for. You know, it's to reduce inflammation. That's mm -hmm. our core ingredient. And so we really cherry picked this kind of all these, you know, ingredients to support women and put it in an easy drink because we're like, we want it to be the easy conversation. And, yeah. um, you know, because so many people like me, I'm like, okay, I need to take glutathione and I need to take this. And I, what does it even mean? So right. at make time, we really wanted to start having um, a very simple conversation and reach all women. Um, and also dig into the pillars of brain health. So a really big part of what we do and why we call it making time is so we can encourage women to really incorporate the pillars of brain health in their day to day.